Welcome back friends. Today we're going to do a hopefully a quick video on how I lube the internals of my Smith & Wesson revolvers. This particular one is a Smith & Wesson 686-6. It's a fairly late model gun. It's going to have these three screws in the side plate. I've removed them just for the uh, sake of time and I've also removed the grip. Now if you have an older model Smith, your screws might be different. We have two of the same ones here and then we have a larger one here. This is the one that actually holds in the crane, but I've already removed that. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is get this side plate off. There we go. Just that easy. Uh, don't be prying that thing up there and marring up your nice pretty gun. Next thing we're going to do is remove the crane. Some people call this the yoke. That's this here. It's held in by that screw that we removed out of the side plate and it just comes off with the cylinder just like that. And we'll just set it aside. Next thing I would remove, I don't have it in here because we use this gun in competition and that would be the hammer block. That's a little bar that goes in right here. If uh, I was to sell this gun, I'd put it back in the original form, but since we use it for competition only, I don't have it in there. But we're gonna remove the mainspring, which is this right here, which is puts the tension on the hammer. And that has a lot to do with your smooth trigger pull. I have a video, if you're wondering why I have an Allen wrench in here and, and an Allen head screw instead of a regular slotted screw, check out my video on changing the mainspring in here and uh, there's a little trick to that and that's why we have an allen head screw in there so there's our mainspring it just slips right out next thing we're going to do is remove the hammer assembly and you want to make sure everything is pushed down in here because if you don't you won't be able to pull the trigger so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the this is the bolt we're going to pull the bolt back by pulling backwards on the cylinder release. So I'm gonna pull back, squeeze the trigger, and then that takes the tension off. What happened there? There we go. And then all you have to do is lift out your hammer. It comes out just like that. Next thing is the trigger rebound slide. That's gonna be this animal right here and this has a lot of friction on it so it has to get some lubrication and it's a little bit tricky it's not bad but this thing is under pressure you can see that spring in there so make sure you keep your finger over that because that spring is going to go flying off so i just take a small screwdriver and i start to get it lifted up just a little bit to where i can get a screwdriver underneath there put my thumb back here so the spring doesn't go flying and I lift it up above that post. So once the spring clears that, there's your spring. I've got different size springs. And uh, then there it is. You can see this one's been polished a little bit. Set it aside. Next thing is we're going to pull out the trigger. Man, everything's sticking to my blue towel. We're using this blue towel just so uh, we can get some good contrast here. And all we're going to do here is just move the hand back. This is your hand that goes through the, the hand window here. And you simply just, there we go. And we just lift it right out. I say we just lift it right out. There it is. There's that piece and then you're going to have this post that goes in there like that. So make sure you don't lose it. You can see this has been polished as well and that'll need some attention later on. The next thing is we're going to remove the uh, cylinder lock and that's that piece that protrudes through here that locks up your cylinder and those notches. So it's pretty easy to get out. All we're going to do is we have to push in here to get to go through this window and then I have to pry under it just a little bit to get it started. And if you hold your tongue just right, sometimes you have to put something in on the other side to get it out a little farther. There you go, just like that. Pry it up, and once you get it past that window, there is a baby spring back there. It's not under a great bit of tension, but you don't want to lose it. So 
once you get it up to that point it's simply a matter of working it up and off that post and there's your little spring okay set that over there next thing is we're going to remove the cylinder lock or bolt I should say that's this piece here and it's got a little spring back there so get our proper screwdriver yeah make sure you're getting some good screwdrivers for this you don't want to scar up your nice beautiful Smith & Wesson revolver by using the wrong screwdrivers they're not that expensive Got a nice set of little gray screwdrivers here and uh, they're pretty cheap on Amazon. So this is the bolt. Goes back and forth here like that. There is a little spring there. It's not under much tension at all. This particular bolt and this particular gun, the tolerance is super tight. So sometimes it doesn't want to come in and go out as easy as I want it to. So if I cuss, I apologize in advance. We just pull it pull it back till this post clears and it should come up like that you have a plunger a little spring attached and this piece here gets a lot of friction on this top back and the bottom so it needs some lubrication once you get that done you pretty much pretty well have a completely disassembled except for the sights frame that's all you have now this looks dirty it's really not like I said I've already cleaned this and just to give you a quick tip on people that that don't want to take their gun down this far they just want to take the side cover off and take a look at what's going on there say you just bought this at the gun show and it, you know you just want to get it clean start off from a fresh you know point of reference but you don't want to take all the parts out and clean them individually. Uh, one good way you can do that, get the side cover off, get some lighter fluid, spray it all in here, let it all run down, clean, let that kind of air dry, and then do it, do it again. Blow it out with some compressed air and let it dry. The good thing about using lighter fluid is it's a petroleum base, so it's going to have some lubricating properties. So it works really good. There's some other products out there, gun scrubber and things like that. Uh, some aerosol sprays you can use in there. But I use a lighter fluid in the trigger group of my, uh, my CZ75, and I tell you, it's, it's great. So it works really good. Now, if you look in here in the gun, uh, the gun a lot of times will tell you uh, some things that are going on. If you can see any wear marks like right there, and there's some back in here, back in here, and there were some in here. That's where I did a little bit of work, just smoothing that, that surface up there. But those are some places that definitely need some lubrication. There's a lot of different lubes out there. Use what you want. WD-40 is obviously not one of them. You can use grease. You can use oil. You can use oil and grease. Uh, what I like to use is Lucas Gun Grease and Lucas Gun Oil. Uh, I've used Militech for a long time, but... Uh, this is just easy for me to get the gun stores right across the street from the office. That's what they, they carry, and it works really good. So, as we reinstall things, we're going to lube them. And you don't need a lot, is the thing. Don't put a whole bunch in here. So, first thing we're going to do is our bolt. And I'm just going to take a little on my fingers here. That side, this side, and there's a pad on the top right there like I say the back and the side and that's really all the bolt needs and I need a paper towel okay then we're gonna reinstall the bolt we're gonna get our little spring and plunger right there so like I said just a little bit of grease you'd be surprised some of this stuff comes in dry so and it still works pretty darn good just put that in there Push it back in. Let's check it for function. Make sure it's nice and smooth. There we are. Okay. The other place I'm going to use a little bit of grease is on the back side of this bolt where the hammer slides by it. 
and I'm just going to put some on here just because I can't get my fingers in there and we're just going to apply just a little bit right there and that's all for the bolt next thing we're going to do is put in the cylinder lock now on these posts I like to put a little grease on these posts not much so we got a little bit there a little bit here and we might as well do this post while I have my little q-tip out trigger rest on this one hammer rest on that one cylinder lock on that one so we get our little, our little cylinder lock and I have a love-hate relationship with this one doesn't always want to go in the way I want it but we have this little spring and it goes right in there and so what I like to do man I just can't hold my tongue just right I say if you can usually get it started right here and then get this over the post it will go right into place just like that okay I'm gonna make sure it's in the way it's supposed to go and it's functioning properly all right that's our cylinder lock other than that it doesn't need any lubrication at all next thing we're going to put in is the trigger assembly now this does have some friction points there you can see I've polished that a little bit we're just going to use a little bit of grease here a little bit of grease here now if you want to use oil that's fine too but whatever you use it's not going to be much make sure you get this back in here the way it's supposed to go you can see how that works okay and it just goes back in line that up there goes into place and then once you get it all the way down the hand should go through this window just like that get that off the actual trigger okay and that's kind of how it works okay Next thing we're going to do is put in the trigger rebound slide. This thing gets a lot of friction and so it does need some attention. That's this block here and I forget exactly which spring I have in here but this has a lot to do with the feel of your trigger pull. So let's get, we're going to do both sides the bottom just like that and once I get it in we're gonna do the top part now what you want to do with this see this post that came out from the trigger it's gonna go in this hole here usually lines up without any trouble whatsoever you just kinda get it started like that get the rebound slide over this post there's some different tools you can use uh, I use this specialty tool it's called a Phillips head screwdriver a small one it's small enough to where I can compress this spring and still go into the the slide so what you want to do is and don't forget this thing is going to be under tension so don't let this go or that spring is going to go flying I'm going to push it in far enough to where you can get it over the post just like that and then take your flathead screwdriver push it in a little farther and oops spoke too soon okay and then take your flathead screwdriver and get it down the rest of the way and then you can usually push it into place just like that let me relube that a little bit since I wore it off some now there's a 
surface area right there and I wanted to do that at the end so I'm going to put a little grease there and like I said this area here needs grease too okay next we're going to put in the hammer assembly kind of got a have three fingers to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this cylinder latch back on, get the proper screwdriver, okay, because we're going to need to slide that bolt back so the trigger will fall down there into place. You can see here, these are wear surfaces here both sides so they're gonna get some love well I'll have to put that back in here in a minute no biggie like I said oil works fine too just doesn't seem to last as long as the grease but that's okay so the way we're going to do this we're going to pull the trigger back halfway and we're going to pull the bolt back at the same time and drop in the hammer so what i like to do i just wiped off my grease hold on a second pay attention moron okay so i like to get it started just kind of let it kind of sit there then with this finger, I'm gonna pull back on the bolt. You'll see it'll come back here, so it'll allow the hammer to go in. I'm gonna pull the trigger back, and then it should fall into place. However, that's not correct. I'll show you why. Try this one more time. Come on. Man, they make this look easy on TV. Okay. What you want to make sure is this engages right there. And so now since I messed up my grease, I'm going to have to re-lube it just a little bit. And we're going to make sure that this is working properly and it has to be everything has to be down in there for it to work properly so pull the bolt back looks like we're doing pretty good i do uh, want to get some grease though right there like i said that thing takes a lot of friction okay we're going to install the mainspring Put this back in, oops, upside down, Randy. Get it back into place right there. I guess I could use, well, maybe if I put it in correctly, that might help. Goes in that notch. Mainspring. Goes in here. And then I take my finger and thumb make sure I have the mainspring centered in the frame and then we just put some tension on it I kind of know where this thing goes I wish I had my t-handle for this my tension for this gun is just that barely threads coming out like that okay this is where I would reinstall the hammer block that goes right here, connects down here if I was using it, but we're not. And then we're just gonna put our side plate back on. Take a look at the side plate real quick. If you see any wear marks, that's gonna give you an indication where something's been wearing. So look at that, and that might be a good place for some uh, attention. Now one other thing I'm gonna put some grease on is where these posts are 
which is right here. Okay, and right there. Just a little bit. The lip goes underneath there. Come on now, there we go. Okay, we got the screw here goes in here, small screw goes in here. Once again, proper screwdriver. Man, you've got this beautiful gun, especially if you got a blue one. And you're using an old Craftsman screwdriver or something and you slip and <laughs> nice scratch there and you don't want any part of that. Last thing to lube is, and it will get oil, is uh, our cylinder and our crane. I say this gun's pretty clean. So we're gonna lube it up and I don't use much. Matter of fact, I just put some on my fingers. Get the extractor out, a little bit there. And then I put a little bit here. I put a little bit here. I put a little bit there. Not a lot. Doesn't take much. In we go. And it already feels like butter. Back together we go last screw and down the stretch they come there we are I believe that one uses the screwdriver it does we're going to test for function oh, nice single action Man, yep, man is two syllables around here, especially when it feels good. Got a little oil on my trigger. You know, some people, you know, every time they take the revolver out and go shoot it, they, you know, drop there, drop there, drop there, drop there. You know, that, that accumulates in there after a while. And some people haven't taken their side plate off ever. And uh, other people are just intimidated by doing it. But as you can see, even a moron can do it. And I'm going to put that link down there to that video I was telling you about. The guy does an exceptional job. And uh, just sit there with your revolver and do it piece by piece. Stop the video, start it, and you'll be good to go. So there you are, folks. That's how I lube the internals of my Smith & Wesson revolvers. I hope you learned something here. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget to leave them below. I'd love to learn some new things from people that know a lot more about this stuff than me. If you like our videos, don't forget to give us one of these and hit that subscribe button. So until next time, you guys be safe. Keep that gun pointed in a safe direction, and we hope to see you out on the range. Adios.